Good afternoon. Welcome to TEDx Cookstown, everyone. My name is David Gibson, or as I call myself with my fancy titles, Professor David Gibson, OBE. And, and they were hard earned. My, my question for you is, have you got the E factor? You want to know what the E factor is, want to see if it's relevant, and I'm, I'm going to talk about it, talk about its history, and how I feel it can play a part in our lives and in changing the world. The E factor is a set of competencies that I came up with through my work at university and out with businesses, and you, you can see it includes creativity, resilience, putting yourself forward, negotiation, a range of, of areas. We all have some of these skills, but we all need to work and be competent at them all. And I want to talk about how I come up with them, the impact it's had, and how we can move forward together. So let's, let's start. After uh, graduating in a degree in, uh, in law and a management postgraduate, I decided to become an accountant. And the reason why I did that was not really a particular love of figures, but I reckoned this was a good area to start my own business in and would give me access to work and help entrepreneurs develop. I did this, I was successful and got involved in various ventures and, and working with entrepreneurs. And what I did discover out in the field was there was a set of skills you could follow. Really, people believe entrepreneurs are born, not made, or you just happen to come from a, a certain family. I didn't believe that, and my work made me see, I would see the same skills like creativity or negotiation being used again and again to save an entrepreneur's life, to, to, to do a deal. And yet, it was difficult to get them to change and adapt and realize they needed to be competent in them all and they needed to develop because personal development maybe in one way was, was quite a new thing then. I then got a, a really good opportunity. Uh, I got a very good offer for my business and I got a junior job in Queen's University, Belfast um, as a teaching fellow. Very low paid job. No one really told me what I was going to do. I thought I was going to give the odd lecture and do a bit of consultancy. What I found was after a week I was in there, I was meant to embed entrepreneurship and innovation into the curriculum of all students in all subject areas. There was, only, there was just one problem, and nobody told me this before the interview. Queens were bottom of the league in the UK in it. There were only 10 students doing one theoretical module, and no one had done it in the world. Um, so it was really sink or swim time for me. What was, I, what was I going to do? Should I leave or should I try and swim? And I tried, and it was difficult. Even though Queen's had had a lot of money to, to do this uh, from the government, it was about to be withdrawn. They were right at the bottom in the UK, and I, and I was trying to sort this. People would avoid me. In the, in the quad, people wouldn't turn up for meetings, and I kept going until eventually I got one chance. Uh, a lecture in environmental planning let me talk to his class in property development, and I got them to do live things. I got them to be creative. I got them to look at outside social economic problems and, and apply it and learn, and they loved it, and they, and they changed things, and they did really well in, 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 in their work, and, and so it happened. And the great thing was, as, as the good news then spread, it went into every subject area. It went into nursing. It went into medicine. It went into drama. Um, it went into engineering. It, it went into biology. We became the first university in the world where it was embedded, the, these skills, the skills of the E-factor. They were learning to be creative. They were learning to be resilient. They were learning to lead. They were uh, learning to uh, sell and persuade not just as necessarily as a business, but in, in making things happen and in changing things. And it was incredible. I, I developed an occupational questionnaire with it. Where they were measured before, after, two years, eight years, and 10 years uh, with 30,000 students. And the skills had stayed. Businesses were created. CEOs were created. Social change was, was created. And Queen's won lots of awards. I won most innovative educator in the UK, Queen's won Times Higher Entrepreneur University of the Year. Our reputation spread. 
But the best thing I got out of Queen's really was a day, one hour with some very, very tough guys from a very rough area in Belfast. They were brought into a bus. They really taught me. They came in for an hour, and they were meant to be a room with me, and I was meant to entertain them by teaching them creativity. Something called social inclusion, where universities invite people from tough areas to make them see what the big university is like. So I did all my usual things. Let's look at the problems that pet owners have, because they were all 16-year-old kind of kids at, at, at home. They wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't listen to me. It wasn't working. It was five minutes to go before the end of the class. And I tried something desperate. What I said was, please, my boss makes me walk my dog at five o'clock in the morning. I don't want to do that. Help me, please. It was just something disruptive, something to change. They all laughed. They went quiet. Then they laughed. Then they start making some suggestions. So I won't mention most of them. But the leader of the group in the corner, this guy said, get your big dog a doggy treadmill and laughed and fell on the floor. And the class was over. So what a great success that was. But in actual fact, it was a great success because six months later, I'm watching Dragon's Den program on TV and looking um, for new inventions coming out and new businesses, which is it's an investment program for entrepreneurs. And I'd love to say one of the guys out of the class came out, but no, it wasn't one of them. I, I, I wish them well. It was a lady from England. What was her idea? Doggy treadmill. It got a million pounds of investment. It became a multi-million pound selling product around the world. And that taught me that if we could learn to be creative and learn to take ideas forward, it's amazing what, what we could do. It wouldn't matter about our education or, or our background if we could learn to disrupt and connect and bring creativity and resilience and personal branding and these skills into our, our life. I then went on to work in Liverpool with Liverpool John Moores, with the, the deputy mayor of Liverpool, with one and a half thousand educators, charities in all the disadvantaged areas, the local businesses, tw and 20,000 students at the helm driving the projects. That one, best in Britain, best in Europe, best in the world. But it was fantastic to see when you get a civic place like Liverpool, Irish civic place as it is, bringing all this together, how they used the e-factor to change lives, to change businesses, to change executives' lives, and to change everything else. What has happened since then is that the e-factor has gone outside the world. I'm now a professor at the University of Cumbria, and, and it's been used with social inclusion, it's been used with schools, it's been used with university, it's been used with executives, and, and with changing the entire region. But the exciting thing is, it's been accepted as a model right all across the, the, the world. Um, China um, have been working with it, have been training uh, school and educators in China. Um, it, it's been used in Africa, it's been used in, 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 in the Middle East, it's been used as, go, as going out to make a difference. It's a simple model that, that, that works. And, and I, to give you an up-to-date example, last night, two emails, one from a guy who's running it, who's taking it over in South Africa, and he's using it to change rural and city entrepreneurship and drive people poverty, get them trained in these competencies, getting them to assess where they are, and he's beating all the national trends during COVID. My view is not, of course, I'm wanting to change people into entrepreneurs or run their own business. That's okay. That's where the skills come, and that's where people traditionally face disruption. Today, COVID-19, the world, but the, the global economy, we all face disruption, and people need these skills to move forward. So I, I'm delighted as, uh, that it is having impact and I'm determined to keep sharing it. And this is my, my message to you is, yes, you have the e-factor already. You do have some of these skills. Some of them you're better at than others. You may be creative. Maybe you need to learn to be more resilient. Maybe you need to promote yourself more. Maybe you need to work in teams. We all need to be competent in all the skills, use our strengths, and work with other people. So I'm asking you out there, whatever you do, business, 
social enterprise, working companies, um, person at school, educator, whatever you do, put on your uh, own mask first, as the airline says. Learn these skills and competencies, and then please pass them on to the people you work with. We can make things happen, we can change lives, and we can move forward. Thank you very much.